Hey family, I'm PT, Pastor Teray Roberts. I'm the lead pastor of the Potter's House at 1 LA in Denver. And on behalf of my wife, Pastor Sarah and myself, we want to welcome you to our channel and to this word. I cannot wait for you to hear what God has for you in this message. I want to tell you a few things really quickly. Subscribe. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, subscribe so that you can be made aware of all of the word that's coming at you week in and week out, and also turn on your notifications so you don't miss a morsel that comes forth. We're also grateful for you and your partnership. If you are so uh, compelled, we invite you to support what we're doing, not just our church, but what our church is doing. There are a number of outreaches, a number of things, critical, necessary things that we support, and we're able to do it because of your generosity. So without further ado, let's get right into this word. God bless you. I'll see you soon. I have to tell you, there is something about that song, More To Come, that reminds me when I begin to feel restricted, when life feels overwhelming or mundane, and I feel so small, that we serve a God who promises that there is always more to come. I don't know about you, but when I hear that song, I don't necessarily even think about things that are more to come. I think about our identity, that there's more to come to who we are. There's more to come than the position that we're standing in right now. And so if that's your word, I want you to take a minute and just type in the comments, more to come, more to come, more to come. But as you're typing it, I want you to consider the area of your life where you need more. Maybe it's more peace, maybe it's more strength, maybe it's more joy, whatever that area is, I want you to prophesy over your own life. Sometimes we think we need a preacher, but what we really need is to prophesy over our own life. There is more to come. You don't have enough strength right now. That's all right. There's more to come. There's more worship to come. There's more encouragement to come. There's more confidence to come. You are more than what you're going through right now. There is more to come. So don't let worry. Don't let stress, don't let fear, don't let anxiety convince you that there isn't more to come. Mother's Day is so special because it is such a reminder to us, each of us, we have a mother, but it is a reminder to us that the multiplication of God happens through womanhood. It speaks to the moreness of God. And so Mother's Day, no matter what this day means to you, I hope that one thing that stays in your mind in this moment is that motherhood is a reminder of multiplication. And even in your own life, God has multiplication connected to who you are. I have to tell you, I'm low key super excited about speaking on Mother's Day because Mother's Day is super special to me. My very first time speaking on a Sunday was at the Potter's House at 1 LA. When I first came though, it was One Church Los Angeles, One Church International actually, (laughs) One Church International. I had the opportunity to speak my very first Sunday seven years ago on Mother's Day. And so this is so special to me. This is like my 1LA anniversary. And so for our 1LA family, our Denver family, you're watching online, you're a part of our family too. Maybe you've never actually been in in person. We just want you to know that we love you. We're sending our prayers to you every single day. You have so much worth, so much value, and you are a part of what God is doing through the earth, through the Potter's House at 1LA. I'm so honored. I get to share the word with you today. I'm gonna be speaking from Matthew chapter eight. I'm gonna start in verse five. And my text begins, it says, now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. And then it says, for I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another come and he comes and to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard it, He marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you 
that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour, that same hour, Jesus healed the servant. Father, we thank you for this moment, for this opportunity, Father, to just sit and commune with you. Father, at home, there are people watching and they're in all different types of circumstances and situations, and yet none of them are unknown to you. Some are watching live, some are watching it later, and yet your timing is impeccable because they will receive this word right when they need it the most. So Father, we make room for what this word is supposed to do. We allow you access to every part of our heart, every part of our mind, every part of our habits, every part of our excuses. And we simply say, have your way. Have your way, great God that you are. And as you're having your way specifically for me in this moment, Father, I pray that there would be no nerves, no fear, no anxiety, Father, just your strength, your anointing, your power, your word, standing tall on the inside of me. To the extent that lives would be changed, that breakthrough would happen, strongholds would come down, and that joy would be released in the earth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen again. Can you type amen in the comments? Can you type amen in the comments? I have to tell you, I love Mother's Day and I love it now that my children are getting older because they ask me what I want for Mother's Day and they can actually deliver. Even though I have to admit, I don't always have a tangible material desire for Mother's Day. All I ever really want to do is go to sleep. Like my son now, he's 18 and he gets so frustrated when he asks me, what do I want for Mother's Day? And I'm like, I wanna go to bed, okay? I didn't get it when I was a child, my mother would say that. She, no, she would say, I want peace on earth, peace on earth. I'm like, okay, so there's nothing that we can get from Target or Bath and Body Works. I don't know how much Bath and Body Works we gave our mom growing up, but we wanted to give her something that felt meaningful. This Mother's Day, after we get finished spending our time together, I'm putting on my pajamas and I'm grabbing a book and I am going to read and sleep because that's what Mother's Day is all about for me. I'm one of those people who love reading. I don't know if you're like me. I'm a little bit of a bookworm. I was studying for this message and I was tempted to say that I remember a time when there was no such thing as audiobooks. Then I Googled when audiobooks were invented and they were invented in 1932. So I couldn't even say that the way that I wanted to, but I do feel like there has been a rise recently as it relates to audiobooks. Even though they've always been there, it seems like because of the busy nature of our lives, they have become more popular over time. So when I was thinking about it though, as much as I love holding a book, as much as it gives me so much joy to turn the page and be completely engrossed in what is happening in the book. Because I am so busy, audiobooks have become a part of my favorite things as well. There's something about an audiobook that allows you to understand the author's intent better than just reading the words. It's the tone in which they read the book that really makes the difference. All of you English majors recognize this already. You know that tone makes all of the difference in communication, specifically when it comes to writing. That's why we go to great lengths to make sure that when we are writing our pieces of work, that we make sure that we use words that reflect the intent because tone is so important. It is the difference between admiration and admonishing. It is the difference between excitement and grief. The words that we use and the way that we string them together create a tone. Tone is the difference between you better get over here right now and you better get over here right now. Tone, it makes all the difference, of course, if you grew up in a household like mine, then this is not unfamiliar to you because you grew up with parents who said things like, watch your tone. Watch your tone. 
You can say yes, ma'am, but it's the way you say yes, ma'am, that determines whether or not you are campaigning for a beatdown and about to get elected, okay? Not, not to say that my mother, whatever, you know, because times are weird and I don't know what people believe, but I will say this. Watch your tone is something that I heard repeatedly growing up. Watch your tone, watch your tone. When we move into adulthood, we don't often hear people say, watch your tone anymore, because as adults, they believe that we already have done the work necessary to assess our tone. And yet the truth is, part of my assignment today is to tell you to watch your tone. Watch your tone, watch your tone. Watch your tone. I, I have to tell you that as I was studying for this message, I felt like God was telling me that there are people who are saying all of the right things, but to the, an unsuspecting ear, you would never really notice that the tone in which they're saying it betrays the very words that they're saying. I'm okay. Some people believe it, but God is watching your tone. I've got this. You may be fooling some people, but God is watching your tone. You serve a God who watches your tone. He doesn't just listen to what you say. He watches the tone in which you say it because he understands that what you say and where you are are not always the same thing. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I serve a God who watches my tone, that when I tell the world I'm okay, he still sends someone to check on me because he recognizes that sometimes my mouth is on autopilot, but my spirit is fluctuating. You need a God. God who understands how to watch your tone. God is looking down from heaven and he's watching as we navigate the world and the circumstances that we are going through. And we're saying all of the right things, but God is watching our tone. If I had some help in this room, I would take about 10 seconds to thank God for a God who watches our tone, that he doesn't trust me when I say that I'm okay, that he doesn't trust me when he says, when I say that I have peace, that he doesn't trust me when I say that I'm doing all right, because he recognizes that sometimes Sometimes I'm hanging on by a shred, but trying to convince everyone else that I have it all together. He knows that I'm nervous to step into this next, but trying to convince everyone I have it all together. And that's why you've got to watch when God starts sending people your way, because it's God's way of saying you, I don't trust what you said. I trust your tone and I'm trying to make your tone match up to what you say, because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. God watches your tone. Watch your tone. Thank you, God, that you watch my tone. Thank you, God, that you sent me a friend right when I needed. Thank you, God, that you sent me the opportunity right when I needed it. Thank you, God, that I was saying I was okay, but I was actually functioning, functioning while depressed. God, I thank you that you watch my tone. God, I thank you that I stumbled across a YouTube message I was never supposed to be watching because you understand that I'm saying all the right things, but you are watching my tone. The tone is the environment in which your words must live. And sometimes we think the environment is okay, but God says the environment cannot sustain who you are supposed to become in me. And there are moments when our tone betrays us. I need to leave this relationship, but your tone betrays us. I need to start this business, but your tone says you're nervous. Your tone says you're skeptical. You're saying all the right thing, but your tone is revealing to God that you're just not there yet. And can I tell you for just a moment, it is okay to not be there yet. You are so human, so fragile, if you will, that there are moments where you have to recognize that it is okay for you to know all of the right words, but for the environment in which the words live in to be skeptical of the very words you're saying. My subject for this message, for those of you who like to take notes, is a new tone, a new tone. You don't need new words, you need a new tone. You don't need more vocabulary, you need a new tone. You don't need to say it to someone else, you need a new tone. Did you know that there is a tone that can be released in the earth that when you say it, there is no doubt that you mean it. There is no doubt that it is gonna be fulfilled. There is no doubt that it is gonna happen. It's not because of what you say, it is the tone in which you say it. When you say, I'm gonna beat this thing, there is a tone in which you say it that says, I'm not gonna quit until I've given it every last shot that I have. I hear God saying that I wanna change 
change your tone. I hear God saying that I don't want to give you any more words. I want to give you a new tone. There's a new confidence coming to you. There's a new power coming to you and it's going to be in your tone. It's not going to be in the books. It's going to be in your tone. It's not going to be in the podcast. It's going to be in your tone. You've been collecting word after word after word. Now God says, I want to give you a new tone. I want to give you a new way to say what you've been saying. I want to give you power. I want to give you authority and you can't get this by yourself. You can't hustle up on this. You're going to have to be in partnership with me if you want to walk in this new tone. I hear God saying, you've been talking about the cat's got your tongue. Oh no, I want to give you the Holy Ghost has got your tongue. I want to give you something stronger than anything you have ever experienced. This new tone can only come from above. And when we find the centurion man walking towards Jesus in Capernaum, mm, he's desperate for a new tone. There's a part of his world, a part of his life that is paralyzed. You see, this man is paralyzed. His servant, my text tells me that his servant is at home. He's paralyzed and dreadful, dreadfully tormented. He's stuck and tormented. Can we talk about the trauma that comes with being stuck and tormented? It's one thing to be stuck, but some people don't mind being stuck. Other people are comfortable being stuck because they don't have any desire to move beyond where they are. But there's something about someone who once felt like their life was moving, that their life was on track, that they were becoming and progressing. And all of a sudden to feel stuck, it's tormenting. And this centurion man realizes that the only way that I'm going to be able to get help, I, I've tried praying over this man. I've tried doing all of the things they told us to do. I've been stretching his legs. I've been moving his legs. The only environment that is worthy of helping him to get into the healing that he needs can only come from Jesus. You're watching this and you feel stuck. And maybe you even feel a little tormented. And I want to suggest to you that just for a moment, you consider the power of what the centurion man does here. He recognizes that the environment in which the paralyzed servant is in is not conducive to the healing required. And because it is not conducive to the healing that he wants this servant to experience, he changes the environment because he's trying to set a new tone. That environment that the paralyzed man is in isn't bringing healing. It isn't bringing breakthrough. You're watching this and I came to make you desperate for a new tone. You've been stuck for too long. You've been tormented for too long. And sometimes you need someone to come into your life and shake you up to make you desperate for a new tone. The centurion man recognizes that I can't do this in the same environment that I've been in anymore. I don't know who you are, but I hear God saying that you have been stuck in an environment that cannot bring you healing. And sometimes you need a sign that it's time for you to move out of that environment. Well, here I am to remind you that it is time for you to move out of that environment and become desperate for a new tone. I don't want to talk to people who are complacent. I don't want to talk to people who are comfortable. I want to talk to somebody who is desperate for a new tone. I have to do this because my family is depending on it. I need a new tone because my community is depending on it. I need a new tone, a tone that releases breakthrough, a tone that releases healing, a tone that releases creativity. I've tried everything that I could do. I went into the social circles. I went into the online courses, but nothing could feed this tone that I needed in my life. I need a new tone. You got to become desperate for a new tone. It doesn't just happen because you hustle up on it. There's a hunger that is down on the inside of you. I'm praying right now that as you're watching this message that God begins to make you hungry and desperate for a new tone. I need to speak to myself in a new way. I need a new tone. I want to say that when I can do all things through Christ that I say it with such authority that I actually believe that I can do all things through Christ. When I say that I am okay, I don't want to say it with skepticism in my voice. I want to say it like someone who is confident that God makes 
all things work together for my good. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you know. It depends on how much tone you apply to those scriptures. It's one thing to say no weapon formed against me will prosper. It's another thing to say I wish a weapon would because no weapon formed against me will prosper. I know who my God is. I know who I serve. There is a tone coming to your mouth. There is a tone coming to your household. There is a tone coming to who you are. And this tone is the kind of tone that can only be borrowed from heaven. The centurion man says, I'm out of my league. I'm out of my league. You got to pay attention to the moments when you're out of your league. You got to pay attention to the moments when you're above, you're, when you're in over your head. This is bigger than me. This is greater than me. I don't have enough in me to pull from to, in order to affect the change that this moment needs. I cannot do it by myself. In order for me to have breakthrough, I'm going to need a new tone. I don't know who you are, but God is setting you up for some new environments. God is setting you up for a new role. God is setting you up for a new position. You're walking into a version of yourself that you've never been before. And if you're honest, you feel like I don't have anything to pull from really, but I'm going to step into it anyway. I hear God saying that is the sweet spot for breakthrough because when you don't have anything to pull from, you become desperate for a new tone. One thing I know for sure is that my old tone won't work in this new tone. My old tone won't work for this new role. My old tone won't work for where God is calling me. So I'm desperate for a new tone. God, show me how to think on this level. God, show me how to act on this level. God, show me how to pray on this level. I got to pray for my child like I've never prayed for my child before. God, I need a new tone. Them cute little prayers won't do anymore. God, I need to step into the new. I don't know who you are, but I feel this so heavily for you that God is taking you into a new identity. And this new identity, you are out of your league. You are outgunned. You don't have everything you need. I know that this is not what they like to post on Instagram, but if I could for a moment help you to get small enough to become desperate for a new tone, you don't know anything about the life you're signing up for and you're signing up for it anyway with your bad self. You know why you're signing up for it anyway? Because you recognize that when I walk out of this boat, that God is gonna be there to help me learn how to walk on water, that Jesus is gonna call me towards him, but I gotta be desperate for a tone that only I can hear. There are some tones that every ear is not alert enough to hear, but there is a tone that comes to someone and they have an ear to hear that new tone that new tone, that new tone, that new tone. The world is not going back to the way it used to be. There's a new tone. Things are not going back to the way they were. There is a new tone. God said, I broke that thing off of you and you're never going to go back. But what I have is ahead of you and what is ahead of you is going to require a new tone. A new tone. Sharper than you've ever been. Wiser than you've ever been more strategic than you've ever been. That's why you can't move the way you're used to moving and you're frustrated because you can't find your momentum. I can't find my rhythm, but I hear God saying that's because I'm trying to introduce the new tone and you're trying to play the old tone. I'm trying to play the new tone and it won't be until you get rid of that need for the old tone that you become desperate for the new tone. And that is where we find the centurion man when he has an encounter with Jesus. He is desperate for a new tone. The most interesting happen, thing happens in this moment when the centurion man becomes desperate for a new tone. <laughs> he says to Jesus, all he says to Jesus is, my servant, my servant is paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. <laughs> he's stuck and he's in pain. And the moment he says this, it alerts something in Jesus. You see, because the very purpose of the identity of Jesus was to come to heaven for those who are stuck and tormented. We do not serve a God who looks down at us being stuck and tormented and he turns away. When God recognized that humanity was going to be stuck and it was going to be tormented, he says, let me get my son Jesus, wrap him in flesh, fill him with the Holy Spirit and send him down to the earth because I will not allow my children to be stuck and tormented. Jesus responds. I don't know who you are 
are. But Jesus responds to stuck and tormented. You've been praying from the place of your pride. You've been praying from the place of having it all together. I hear God saying, if you really want to see me move in your life, find the area where you are most stuck. Find the area where you are most tormented and allow me to touch that with my presence. Allow me to bring that change into your life. Allow me to bring that transformation to the space where you need it the most, the place where you feel the most stuck and tormented. Jesus responds immediately. The centurion man doesn't even say to Jesus, I want you to come to my house. He, all he does is explain the situation and it, it, it causes a response. In Jesus, Jesus says, I will come and heal him. I'll come and heal him. Oh God, I feel like we should rest there for a moment and think for a second, oh my. I'm thinking in my own mind of the spaces in my life that feel stuck and dreadfully tormented. And I'm thinking for just a moment of how if I just brought that to Jesus, Jesus, if I just laid that out to Jesus and said, this isn't just something that I'm willing to deal with anymore. This isn't just something that I'm just going to call a part of life anymore. This is something that has me stuck. I cannot move and it's tormenting me. It's making me feel like I'm a failure. It's making me feel like I'm never going to be anything. It's making me feel rejected. It's making me feel abandoned. It's bringing all of my insecurities to the surface and Jesus responds to that immediately. He says, I'm going to come and heal him. I'm going to come and heal that area. Oh God, I feel like prophesying over somebody's life right now. I'm going to come and heal that area where you're insecure. I'm going to come and heal that area where you have uncertainty. I'm going to come and heal that area where you feel like your marriage is falling apart. I hear God saying that I'm sending a word that's going to come and heal, come and heal. I'm coming because you learned how to pray from the place of stuck. That feels like a message unto itself. Praying from the place of stuck worshiping from the place of stuck. Can you take your mask off for just a moment? Just between you and I. Can you admit that underneath it all, this is not to negate the things that are going well. We praise God for that. We thank God for that. But Jesus, mm, I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to ask you for more because you've already given me so much. But if I'm honest, there's a part of me that's stuck and tormented. And that part of me, no matter how good these things are on the other side, that part of me that is dreadfully tormented and stuck, God, God, I need you there. I don't want to believe that this is just how the cookie crumbles. Not when you hold it all together. God is stuck. God, the marriage is stuck. God, the child is stuck. God, the creativity is stuck. God, the confidence is stuck. God, it's the faith. My faith is stuck. My faith is stuck. I used to believe, but I don't believe the way that I used to believe. It's stuck. Mm. And I hear God saying, just like this man was stuck and dreadfully tormented, that there's someone you're watching this message and you are stuck, but you have become numb to the torment of being stuck and you have become comfortable in a place that was supposed to torment you into moving. It was supposed to antagonize you until you started seeking a new tone. It was supposed to irritate you and get under your skin until you became desperate for Jesus to give you a new tone, a new word, and you have become comfortable in the place that used to torment you. And I hear God saying that he's going to allow it to torment you again. Don't let yourself become numb. Don't allow yourself to become comfortable in the place where you were once stuck because God doesn't want you to stay there. The centurion man finally finds Jesus and he, Jesus says, I'm going to come and heal him. And like most of us, if it were me, I'd have been like, come on, Jesus, I'm going to fry some chicken. Come on. Do you even eat chicken? I don't know what's happening back here. Some duck, some quail, whatever it is we got going. Jesus, I got you. You come to my house. I'm going to make you some biscuits and some rice. He's going to be healed and we're going to sit around and eat chicken. But the centurion man doesn't do that. 
The centurion man says, I am a man of authority. You don't have to come. Just send a word. Just speak a word. He says, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, speak a word, speak a word. And then he uses an analogy as a soldier, a soldier who understands that because you are under authority, that if you tell a soldier to go, that they go. And if you tell a soldier to come, that they come. And so what he says and said is, Jesus, you don't have to bring yourself physically to my house to touch the servant. What you can do instead is send one of your soldiers. What? You didn't see that in the, in the text. He doesn't actually say, send one of your soldiers. He just says, speak a word. That's because this centurion man understands that the word is a soldier. Now it makes sense when we see in the Old Testament that the word will not return into me void because my word is a soldier. It will accomplish what I set it out to accomplish. The word is a soldier. That's why when you receive a word from God, you have to recognize that that word is on a mission. That word has a declaration. That word is on command from God to not just invade your life, but to shake up things in the earth. And the centurion man says, just send a word. The word is healing. Healing is one of God's soldier. Breakthrough is one of God's soldiers. Strength is one of God's soldiers. So when you start asking God to have breakthrough in your life, when you start asking God for joy to return, for peace to return, what you're really asking God for is to send me one of your soldiers. Send me one of the soldiers that I know can help me go to war with the enemy that is trying to torment my life. Send me one of your soldiers that can help me get unstuck. You're asking God for a word. God says, I'm going to give you a word that's like a soldier. I don't know who you are, but I hear God saying that even as you receive receive this message that soldiers are receiving their marching orders. That God has word lined up in heaven and it is a marching order that is meant to come down to the earth to help you accomplish what God has set out for you to accomplish in the earth. I don't know who you are, but just for a moment I want to prophesy that there are soldiers headed your way. There is an army headed your way. An army that's got your strength. An army that's got your healing. An army that's got your breakthrough. You don't see anyone coming, but you better catch every word you can get because if you catch every word you get you'll be catching soldiers catch every word catch every word you can get catch every word you can get because the centurion man says there is a word that can feel like a touch you're wondering what does it feel like when i receive a word from heaven when you receive a word from heaven it feels like someone physically touched you no one was around but even as i'm preaching right now something feels like it's physically physically touching the inside of your heart and i hear god saying that's just one of my soldiers you're wondering what's happening god send some of your soldiers to their house god send some of your soldiers to their finances God send some of your soldiers to their mind. I hear God saying that you don't need anyone else to touch you. You just need a word that feels like a touch. A word that feels like a touch. A word that makes me get unstuck. A word that makes me finally go and get the help that I need. Sometimes you need a word. Sometimes you need a soldier that's dressed up as a word. I don't need another touch. I tried the friendship touches. I tried the relationship touches. I tried to get the touch from money. I hear God saying no touch will do. You need a word. And Jesus commends this man's faith. He commends this man's faith because he says, this man gets it. He says, I haven't seen this level of faith in all of Israel. Finally, someone who understands that I will not be available for physical touch forever. Jesus recognizes that his mission on earth will only last three years and then he will ascend to heaven. But he needs someone who understands the power of God's word. I need someone who understands the power of word, that the word is better than a physical touch, that a word from God can beat anything that has ever tried to come up against you in the past that if I release one of these words into the atmosphere, that it can set a new tone. It can set a new tone. Jesus says, the centurion man gets it. Our job, ladies and gentlemen, is to come to a place when we recognize like the centurion man, that maybe what we're asking for is a touch, but what we really need to set a new tone is a word. A word that feels like a touch. 
Because when Jesus heals the centurion man's servant, all he does is send healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. That's why we close the prayers that we do because it is our way of saying that the words that I am sending, I'm sending in the name of Jesus. I'm not sending it in my own name because in my own name, I don't have enough access. In my own name, I don't have enough power. In my own name, I am not sure that I can even touch heaven. But if I send it in the name of Jesus, then there is no doubt that it will receive heaven's address. There is no doubt that heaven will receive this prayer that I am sending and God says in response that when I send it back to you, I'm going to send it in Jesus's name, healing in Jesus name, power in Jesus name, creativity in Jesus name, strategy in Jesus name, confidence in Jesus name. I'm just speaking a word over somebody who's stuck in a particular area. I hear God saying that I'm going to send it in Jesus name. I'm going to send healing in Jesus name. I'm going to send comfort in Jesus name. Hold up grief. You got to back off up off of me. There's love coming in Jesus name. Hold on stretch. You got to back up off of me. There's peace coming in Jesus' name. Jesus is sending soldiers after you. Jesus is sending soldiers after you. Depression, you better get up off of me because there's peace coming in Jesus' name. There's strength coming in Jesus' name. There's joy coming in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In my own name, I couldn't do it, but the centurion man said, Jesus, if you say healing, that paralyzed man can get up and walk. In your name, it can be done. In your name, it can be accomplished. In your name, in your name, in your name, in Jesus' Jesus name, I can set a new tone. Finally, Jesus has someone who gets it. And here we are, thousands of years later, and so many of us are stuck. Stuck, tormented, paralyzed by fear, paralyzed by the abandonment, paralyzed by the rejection. I don't know what battle you're up against, but I know that if you are in this world, you are up against a battle. God, we need so much breakthrough on earth. So many parts of our world, so many parts of our culture are paralyzed. And it would be one thing if we were okay with it being stuck, but we're tormented by it, tormented by a pandemic, tormented by grief, tormented by feeling unfulfilled, tormented by depression, tormented by our mental health con continuing to decline. We're tormented down here. And God just needs a few people who would be like the centurion man who recognize that I need a new tone for my atmosphere. I need a new tone for the areas of my life, not just in the world, but the areas in my personal life that are stuck. Mm. This man could have said, I've tried everything and now I'm out of faith. Instead, he's tried everything. So it's time for faith. We don't have to wait until the last minute to invite faith into our journey faith into our lives. The centurion man got it, and I hope that you do too. Because Jesus can't come to our house physically. We can pray all we want to, but until Jesus actually comes back, what we need more than anything is a word. If that's you and you're watching it and you know you need a word, I want you to type in the comments, I need a word, I need a word. I need a word, I need a word, I need a word. But don't just say it blankly. Think about the area of your life where you need a word. God, I need a word, this is new. God, I need a word, I have so, so many ideas, but I have no way to actually manifest them. God, I need a word, I need a word. I need a word for my spirit. I need a word for this new venture. I need a word for this marriage. I need a word for raising these children. I need a word for this business. I need a word for this nonprofit. I need a word because I don't have the money. I need a word because I don't have the time. I need a word, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. I need a word. And when you ask God, to send a word in Jesus' name, he releases his soldiers. I wanna pray with you. I wanna pray for someone who is watching at home 
and who feels so much like the centurion man felt. And when she was desperate for a new tone, and yet just like the centurion man, what you will have to do is remove yourself from the environment where you have been living and reach for the heavenlies that can release a new tone. There is a new tone in the heavens and it is on reserve for someone who understands that instead of looking around, the most powerful thing we can do is look up. Mm, I felt something. If you're watching this message and you're one of those people in need of a new tone, I just want you to look towards the heavens. If you're driving, be careful. I don't want you to do this. Wait until you get home. But I want you to take time that when you pray, maybe instead of closing your eyes, that you would look towards the heavens, see beyond the roof, see beyond the sky, and dare to see heaven staring back at you. And then I want you to bring to mind the place in your life where you feel the most stuck, where you feel the most dreadful torment. I want you to bring that place to your mind, the insecurities, the anxieties, the worry, the concern, the trembling, the stress. Bring that to mind and then look towards heaven. Spirit of the living God, there is no name greater than your name. There is no power greater than the power that comes from above. There is no strength, there is no wisdom, there is no creativity, there is nothing greater than who you are. And Father, we are looking up to you because we are in over our heads. We are looking up to you because we recognize that without you, we cannot transition into this new tone. We're trying to set a new tone as a business owner. We're trying to set a new tone as a leader. We're trying to set a new tone as a spouse, as a child. We've been stuck in the same ways for too long and it's tormenting my health and it's tormenting my joy and it's tormenting my peace, but we literally don't know how to do it without you. We're desperate for a new tone. Father, send a word as only you can do. Father, they're watching online and they've brought to their, to their minds, they've brought to their hearts the areas of their lives where they feel the most stuck. Father, I pray that even as they have decided to consecrate themselves in this moment, that you would begin to meet them. Precious Spirit, wrap them in your arms. Father, help them to recognize that they're not in it on their own, that you hear them. God, I thank you that you hear our tone. God, I thank you that you don't believe us when we say we're okay. God, I thank you that you don't believe us when we say we have it all together. Father, thank you for watching our tone. God, illuminate in us the areas of our lives where there is a disconnect between how we're doing and what we need. Father, I thank you that it's already in your heart to move, restore, redeem, love, and propel. It's already in your heart to do that. It's already in your heart to take us from glory to glory to glory. And because it's already in your heart to do it, Father, we pray that you would bring us into alignment with what you wanna do on the earth. Father, forgive us for we have sinned. We have settled for touch when we really needed a word. We have stayed stuck and comfortable when we really should have been tormented into moving. Forgive us, Father, because we missed the mark and we know that we don't deserve it, but God, because you are willing and because you are able, we open up our hearts to receive breakthrough to receive a word that will set a new tone in our lives. Father, I thank you that you are not going to put us in a position or in a role and then sit back and watch us fail, that you are willing to partner with us. And so God, I pray that you would partner with every person watching, every person listening right now. Partner with them, Father, as they dare to do great exploits in your name. Partner with them as they dare to break generational curses. Partner with them as they dare to bring strongholds down. Partner with them, God, send your soldiers to help them beat the giant that is ahead of them. And we thank you, Father, that it is already done. 
not because we're saying it in our name, but because when Jesus was nailed to the cross, you put to death every limitation that could ever stand in our way. And God, if there's anyone watching right now who hasn't received Jesus as their personal Savior, Father, we acknowledge that the bridge to you, the bridge to breakthrough, that bridge's name is Jesus. And we receive Jesus as our personal Savior, Father. We open our hearts and we say, we're gonna give faith a try. We're gonna give Jesus a try because we believe that we are covered in His name. And I thank you, Father, that as they receive Jesus, that they are receiving every good and perfect gift that is available to them as they navigate life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen again. Family, I hope that this message helps you to set a new tone. I hope that as you're navigating your life and walking into the next that is assigned to your name, that you would feel that you are not alone. May you never, ever, ever forget that when you see a word, whether it's on Instagram or a word on YouTube or a word through a worship song, that it's not just a word meant to make you feel good, that it is a soldier on assignment. And so your goal is to make sure that that soldier, that word accomplishes what it is meant to accomplish in your life. Allow that soldier access to the area where you need it the most. I'm praying that God seals this word, that it would take root, and produce fruit in your life. To all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. I love you, we love you, and we'll see you here on Thursday.